So some of you have been bringing Paula Jean Swearingen to my attention because it looks like she is going to run for Senate. So this is from Joe. And then RF Hartwell also shared an interview from friend of the show, Mikey Figueredo from the Humanist Report. Uh, so here's what's going on so far. Democrat Swearingen announces renewed bid for U.S. Senate in 2020. Activist turned political candidate Paula Jean Swearingen announced she'll again run for a seat in the U.S. Senate. She made the announcement Tuesday on our campaign's Facebook page. Uh, Swearingen first ran in 2018 as an environmentally conscious and an advocate for the working and lower class. Uh, and then she lost to Joe Manchin, who this article describes as a moderate Democrat. <laughs> There is no society where Joe Manchin would be considered a moderate, not even the United States. Uh, he's a conservative, even by the United States standards, which means he would be considered fringe far right anywhere else in any other similar democracy in the world. Democracy. All right. So Swearingen right now is the only Democrat running. She'll likely face, if she gets to the primary, she'll likely face incumbent Republican Shelley Moore uh, Capito, by the way. So here's something that... Uh, that RF Hartwell shared over on our Reddit, and this is an interview with her via uh, the Humanist Report. So the opponent for Paula Jean Swearingen does in fact pronounce their name Capito. Now, I am of Italian descent, I speak Italian, and I can tell you that uh, the correct pronunciation would be uh, Capito. That's just how a name like that would be pronounced. It would be Capito. All right, like because the I has an E sound and the O is, is like kind of like an accented O, so it would be Capito. Um, this person pronounces it Capito. No judgment here um, because, you know, if I really wanted to say my name, uh, the proper pronunciation, it would be Placone. All right, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go by Ron Placone. It, it's Ron Placone. All right, that's fine. You don't call him Capone because we're speaking English here. So uh, it would be Capito. But if that person wants to go by Capito, that's their business. But if you pronounce it Capito, you're technically not wrong. I'm just saying. It's not like, oh, Capito. Like, all right. Because that's actually in the interview. Which let's uh, let's get this interview uh, queued up here. Because uh, this is from Mikey and the Humanist Report. Here we go. Announced. And this time, I mean, I had a good feeling about you last time, of course. Mm -hmm. Because you're so real. You're genuine. But this time, it feels really different. I believe you're the only Democrat running in the primary currently, right? So you're. So he's acknowledging she's the only Democrat running um, and that she'll be going up against Gabito or Capito. They want to go by Capito. That's their business. No, uh, no judgment here. Kind so of far. the front runner. So, mm -hmm. so what's different this time now that you're not running against Manchin, you're running against Capito? Well, Capito and Jim, Joe Manchin are kind of the same people, except one's Democrat and one's Republican. I just don't think Shelley Moore Capito's got enough scrutiny. She she votes straight Republican. She votes against our health care. She's not a really good advocate for West Virginia, and they're really good friends. So unlike Joe Manchin, she actually has, uh, Capito actually has the R next to her name. You know, that that's the only thing. Joe Manchin, for an inexplicable reason, has a D next to his name. There's no reason for it. He is uh, a dino, a Democrat in name only, uh, which, again, Democrats overall a conservative party. Joe Manchin is too conservative for a largely conservative party compared to other uh, similar parties around the world. Anyway. But um, I really believe that if we're going to elect somebody like Bernie Sanders, we need support in the Senate. We have some good progressive candidates in the House, We uh, good incumbents in the House. And we have some candidates, you know, good progressive candidates for the House, but we definitely need more support in the Senate. So she's right. Paula Jean is thinking long term. She's thinking down the road and she realized we need to beef up the Senate if we're going to have a president, Bernie Sanders. Because here's what happens. If Bernie Sanders is our next president, um, what he's going to have to do is, A, Paula Jean is right. We're going to have to beef up the Senate, get more progressives in the Senate. The other thing Bernie is going to need to do is he's going to need to get the movement behind him, similar to what FDR did, similar to the fireside chats. He's going to need to go to, hey, you the people, we the people. Here's what I want to get done. Here's what I, as the president you elected, want to get done. Here is who's holding it up in the House and the Senate. Here's who they are. And then we the people got to go and pick those people off. We got to get them out of office.
that's what's got to happen. We have to get them out of office. We have to vote them out. And it's got to be from the ground up. When we got a good guy in the White House who's like, this is what I want to do. Here's who's holding it up in the House and Senate. Well, we got to change that House and Senate. So Paula Jean uh, has some foresight going for the Senate. Uh, smart move. Smart move on her part. Joe uh, wanted to bring her in the part in, into the spotlight. So did RF Hartwell. Um, I like Paula Jean. I, I think she's, um, you know, when it comes to electoral politics, I, you guys know, I'm not a very big fan. <laughs> and um, I do like when I see some diamonds in the rough and I, and I consider her one of the diamonds in the rough, so to speak. So uh, I like Paula Jean and we'll try to have her on this show to talk more about her, uh, her Senate campaign. And uh, good job there, Mike Figueredo. Shout out to Mike Figueredo. Even though apparently, apparently it's Capito. You know, he said Capito. She corrected him. This person goes by Capito. Maybe, uh, maybe an Italian last name is, is dangerous to West Virginia voters. Apparently, I don't know. Maybe West Virginia Republicans don't like Italian last names. I have no idea uh, if there's any truth in that. But uh, I don't know. Who knows? Get you new. With Rhonda, do you wanna know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Rhonda, do you wanna know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your 